You're watching Business Agenda. Some of the keenest observations made by the David Murray Committee in their interim report into the financial system was about the superannuation industry. The sector, it says, does not have enough price competition and operating costs and fees are too high in comparison to international standards, the report said. They're also concerned about leveraged investments by super funds, which could become a risk for the system in future. Club Plus Super is a $2 billion industry super fund with over 90,000 members, so they tell me. Its chief executive is Paul Cahill, and he joins me now from our Sydney CBD studio. Paul Cahill, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, Helen. Let's talk about some of the, uh, the Murray inquiry observations, because they're not recommendations, but they're saying very clearly that fees are not competitive enough in the super fund sector. Now, you could obviously you you all could obviously do a lot more but is it partly a result of individuals not engaging enough with their own super not making you accountable not being sure to sort of check around who's got better fees look the first the first instance on fees helen is that over the last three years we as an industry have had massive government reform and as as an industry we've had to introduce a lot of new products and had to invest heavily into those uh, products. We've had to introduce My Super and, uh, and Stronger Super, and that's come at a cost. So we've had to spend a great deal of money over the past three years getting ready for those reforms. We've had to put new IT in, new systems, new compliance, new people just to deal with those just to deal with those changes. So that's, that's I hate to be rude, but will we get out the little violins at this stage? I, I appreciate some people <laughs> mightn't feel sorry for us, but. On because they, the, sorry, the committee is saying that compared to international standards, you know, our super funds are too high in their fees. Well, de definitely there are funds that are too high, but there are also some very good low cost funds in there. If you look at a lot of the industry uh, information, you'll find a lot of the corporate funds, a lot of the government funds, and a lot of the industry, fu industry funds are actually very low cost providers. Notwithstanding that, they're then put in with a lot of high cost uh, funds, a lot of the retail funds, and the averages are put, uh, put forward. If, if consumers are interested in getting low cost super funds, they are out there, they do exist. They just need to engage a bit better and find them, but they do exist. Funds like ourselves, we're listed as one of the five cheapest funds in the country. So they do exist. It's just that they are ma mashed up with a lot of other funds as a result. All right. Well, I know the retail funds, just to sort of give them the benefit of the doubt as well, they would say that they are now offering, I guess since the, um, the advent of my super, they are offering much lower cost funds as well. But now default money, this idea that the committee came up with that perhaps default fund money could all go into one fund and then the government tender out the management of that fund. These are for people who don't choose a fund to go into, individuals who don't choose where their super should go into. David Murray was saying this is being done in Chile, a, a kind of a variation of this, and it has brought down fees significantly. Just on, a, on an industry note, I'm not sure how we could put all 10 million Australians' default money through one fund. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how that idea came to pass, because those that run funds know that there's a lot of structural issues inside of those. Mm. How the Chileans have managed to do it, I'm not sure, but I've got a sneaking suspicion where we may be comparing an apple with an orange over there. I think Chilean uh, superannuation pensions are a lot smaller than Australia, and I'm not sure they have the same structures in terms of insurance and benefits attached to it. Again, I, I don't know entirely, but trying to put all of 10 million Australians' Uh, contributions through one default provider sounds very problematic to me. It does actually and also it's it's talked about going into you know the government takes it first and then they tender it out to the lowest cost but it sounds like there's a few clipping of the <laughs> ticket to go through there but anyway uh, one of the other issues of course was that they are worried about but sorry one thing I want to say about that moving those default funds I mean that would seem to be a threat to industry funds because at the moment the industry funds get the bulk of that default money, don't they? Oh, they do. A lot of uh, the award structures do put uh, uh, pe uh, people's contributions through industry funds. That's currently under review at the moment as well by the government. We're actively looking at that. But again, coming back to the, the singular sort of issue of putting it through one fund, I, I really think that needs a lot more thought put into it. Yeah, OK. Now, 
tinkering with the super system. <laughs> I know you've got some views about that, but certainly users of superannuation, the individuals out there, a lot of them, particularly approaching retirement, are worried that there is more tinkering going to be done, that it's kind of constant. And I know a lot of the industry too are saying, you know, don't tinker anymore. But what, where do you think this is heading? We'd, as an, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of the industry, but the industry would love to be left alone for a period of time. We've had so many changes over the past three to five years, and that has really reflected in consumer confidence. We hear every day about people wanting to put money into super, wanting to make arrangements for their retirement, wanting to look after themselves in retirement, but they don't have the confidence to do so because they're concerned that the rules today won't apply when they retire. And that's not an un unreasonable sort of criticism because the rules have changed so often, around, so often around superannuation that people don't have that confidence. As an industry, we would love nothing more than to be just ring-fenced and left alone for five or ten years so we can get on with the business of putting people into retirement with as much money as possible. I didn't ask you, but what's your reaction to the Murray inquiry? Interesting. I've, I've sort of read the super bit, as you could appreciate. Uh, there's a lot of thought gone into it, and there's some really good points in it, but as it's still an interim report, I think there's a lot more work that's going to go into it. There's a couple of curly things in there that, as I said, the, the Chilean system uh, needs a lot more thought, but there are some pretty good ideas coming out of it as well. The retirement piece about allowing people more product choice in retirement, I think, is brilliant because we are very structured in how we approach that at the moment. So the ability to have new ideas for people moving from the accumulation phase into the pension phase or from work into retirement, I think is really good. Yeah, well, in fact, David Murray was highlighting the fact that, uh, you know, really a lot is done through the uh, when people are employed, but then when it comes to when they're retired, there's really, you know, it's, it's no holds barred. You can essentially do what you like. And a lot of people don't have that ability to work out how to plan, how to get some kind of annuity or, or pension happening, pension stream happening from their, you know, this big lump of money they've got invested. Correct. One of the things we spend most of our time at Club Plus doing is assisting people trying to get from that mid to mid 50s across into retirement. That's when they want advice, that's when they want help, that's when they want to know how do I go from being a full-time employee for the last 40 years into a retiree? How does the government Centrelink program affect me? How much money do I need to retire? How long is it going to last? And what are my options around that? So a lot of these issues uh, again, the Murray inquiries had a good look at it, but again, more work on that. And if we can get a lot more definitive answers on it and some, some discussion around it, I think that's a really smart place to go. One of the areas that he talked about, and not really just with super funds, but he was talking, I think, with the whole of the financial um, products, disclosure. <laughs> the documents being way too complex, not done in effective language, not, uh, not enough disclosure that, you know, X might be a sales document rather than a, an independent um, information document, but also that people don't read them because they don't necessarily understand them. I can't agree enough. Look, as I sit here after 22 years of running funds, our compliance, our PDSs, our documents are written by lawyers for lawyers. The sad fact of the matter is the, the member or the consumer at the end of the day is the least of anyone's concern and that's wrong because we get average Australians trying to understand what they've got and because of the red table compliance around it now it is so much harder to understand and funds or providers or any number of uh, institutions are so concerned about the, the litigation involved in it now, they're so heavily engineered that the average Australian just can't understand it and I can't encourage enough the opportunity to make it simple, make it plain, make it you know, easy for people to digest and uh, again it's something we spend a lot of time on but from an industry perspective we're so over, overly concerned about making sure we get it legally right versus right for the consumer. Alright well there's a lot more to go on this Paul Cahill the Chief Executive of Club Plus Super thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure Helen. And for a look at what